Warning, warning. Proceed with caution. Hazardous conditions ahead. Slippery when wet. Watch for falling objects. Prepare yourself for entering the mind and thoughts of Mark Herman Schmidt. 20 minutes to leave your mark. Steve Winwood? Yep. He was in, uh, not Traffic. Uh, oh, no, was it Traffic? I think he was the lead singer. He was in Traffic. I was thinking of the movie Traffic. Uh, so, we've got Mark, Herbert Schmidt. We've got Bobby Martinez. We've got Travis Kenny. I don't know if this is going to be uh, 20 minutes or 30 minutes to leave your mark or if it's going to be a uh, full Bobby cast or if it's going to be a, a, a – what is that? What is the human centipede? Uh, po- a podcast centipede. <laughs> human centipede. Well, either way, <laughs> you, just, you, could, you could grab stuff off that list if and you just, just want something to just throw it out there and see where it goes. Yeah, we will. We will. Bobby's Bobby's pretty creative. I, I had something we were talking about today and he's like, hey, anytime you have somebody that's uh, you know doing a, a phone interview because I've kind of got the equipment now. Just put a mannequin with their with their mask on it, and then you can sit there and talk <laughs> a to a printed them. picture of their face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, so it, Bobby's creative. So, Mark, uh, it's great to have you on. Great to have you here. Great to see you again. It's been a while. You're welcome. This is going to be <laughs> <laughs> your pleasure. Um, rib your- for your pleasure. <laughs> Mark's ribbed. <laughs> Is that you got mumps? <laughs> so the pox. So I'm like one of those straws that just like the accordion straw ribbed. Yeah, it's very for everyone's pleasure. Um, <laughs> this will probably be released closer to March, into March. So we're gonna go ahead and kind of throw this out here. March, we all know, is uh, pa- St. Patrick's Day. Hmm. Is there any? thing that you guys will be doing for st patrick's day as you know like that's a tradition you, what do you guys usually do what do you guys usually eat what do you guys usually drink what's what do you guys usually do mark go ahead and start with you um i usually find four leaf clovers mm. mark is really good at that i've got a few of his four leaf cl- <laughs> clovers Dude. he's got an eye for it he, he's almost like pre- I, I, I pictured I, i'm thinking how does mark know this and i picture the movie predator where it's all heat seeking like i think he's got this four leaf clover heat seeking thing where he can just see oh there's uh over here's a it's like a yellowish of the green oh that's i'm gonna pick one that's that's where it's at how do you find them so easily i'm like imposter 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 i see all those ones that are like trying to blend together to fool my ass but i'm like i don't bend over for shit it's gotta be the right one dude do you just sit down and just get in the clover field and just start picking where, or, where is a clover field well I, dude, think- I got i got a tire i got a tire surrounding one in my driveway where they grow like and but i let like some of them like grow longer so i could actually pick them when they're a little bit bigger yeah but then the weather just like crushed them with the snow and oh. all that stuff. But I, I just marked it with a tire because people would always like pull forward and drive over them. And I'm like, shit, man. Like, <laughs> I got a four leaf clover I'm growing like, there, buddy. I'm like, don't fuck up my cabbage patch, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you'll be picking four leaf clovers. What's your drink? What's, what's your drink of choice? Um, do you do the whole Guinness style? I'll do the green beers. Oh, yeah? Yep. Do you go anywhere uh, around here or do you go to? I go wherever the party's at, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best it's the way of the, it's the way of the road that's just yeah. a solid answer no matter so, what the situation so what do you do goes. today i go where the party's at bro <laughs> yeah I, I just like i bring a loaf of bread <laughs> and i walk through town and just i ain't feeding fucking birds or nothing but i just pick <laughs> off little chunks and throw them there that way people know where to go man i'm yeah. like hansel and gretel dude just <laughs> hooking them up i thought you were gonna make load. people sandwiches yeah I was, I was, I was gonna say, <laughs> well i mean if they could catch up i still got extra i could dude, throw some bologna in another pocket and stuff st patrick's day i think has the best bread though it's that soda bread it's that it's got some raisins in it it's you ever had it before it's it's so good you pick some you up can only get it on st patrick's it's day? like that's like when they make the, the oh, most of it huh. it's like a it's like a crunchier like, there's no st patrick's day celebration it's like bread eggnog yeah like where do you oh, go? Jesus. There's no Irish pub in town. Yeah, I think you just go to Cedars. Cedars. You, you see Chris dressed up as a leprechaun, and then <laughs> the brown leprechaun. <laughs> Dude, you ever watch like when the- I lived in Philly, they had like a party bus that well, would that's take because you up in the morning, and well, then they would just take you to all the Irish pubs all day. Well, that's because it's like a lot of Irish over there, and see, that's like Irish is like the only thing I can do as it as I a, haven't uh, celebrated St. Patrick's Day. Everything since. else I suck at. The Irish. You can go to the Irish. <laughs> That's all I can do. Um, you want the part? No, I don't know how to do it. I we'll still think of Double Rainbow. Anytime I'm thinking of St. Patrick's Day. The guy day, crying. Dude, I remember <laughs> the first time I watched that video, I was I was pre-funkin'. 
over by uh, Vantage yeah. before a Kings of Leon concert. And these Canadian guys showed me that, and I was just How do you crying. pre-funk before Kings of Leon? You drink soda and listen to records? No, I didn't. <laughs> this party is going to be lit. Dude, you party with some Canadians, and it's always, you might have a pillow fight at the end of the Somebody night. Somebody like you. You're like, yes. <laughs> just pounding your Coca-Cola. <laughs> Dude, I mean, for, for, somebody, for somebody that, you know, got an STD, they're like, my sex is on fire. <laughs> You gotta be in that mark. You gotta oh. be, sorry, buddy. You gotta be in the mark, Mike. You gotta be in the mark. Yeah, the mic, the mark, mark <laughs> Mike on the mark, Mark on the mic. Uh, Bobby, what do you do for St. Patrick's Day? I, since I've been back here, I haven't done much. In Philly, we used to like catch the party bus at like eleven a.m. By nine o'clock, you're passing out because you've been drinking all day. And they have they good food and stuff, but out here, this what are you gonna do? Do you guys wear a another man day? Suit another like day Charlie. at Cedars. Green man suit would be perfect. That'd be pretty funny. Since you were talking about Philly, yeah, I, it would, the I mean, man. there's all kinds of. Like, so Philly had any reason that so you like Philly has little boroughs. So imagine like something the size of Ballard, but just all row homes. So there's the hundreds of thousands of people in these little boroughs. So I lived in one called Clifton Heights, which was like in South Philly. And any excuse they could have to drink and party, they would find. So they had this thing called Cow Pie Bingo. They set up a bingo field on like a, a, a like a high school football field, and they just walking the cow up and down, and wherever it would take a deuce, that was one of the spots for bingo. That's awesome. And the whole town would come out and be around this track, <laughs> and everyone would just get <laughs> shit housed. Like like sixteen year olds, like cops didn't even care. It was like Dude, sixteen year olds doing keg stands. I gotta like, tell yeah. you. I gotta say, cow pie bingo sounds like a Mark <laughs> idea. Like that'd be one of the things that he'd bring on this little sheet, and I'd say, "Oh, what it's is, on the bottom if you I'm look." Like, no. <laughs> I'm like, what is cow pie bingo, dude? Just imagine. It just, it just football says, field. It's just abbreviated. That's all. <laughs> so that's what the kind of stuff they did in Philly, though. I, it sounds like a Mark thing. That's <laughs> insane. Uh, that's that's crazy. I kind of like that. We we when I was a kid, not when I was a kid. When I was a, I'm a dad, obviously. When my my when Madden, Megan, and and Kane uh, were like. 10, 9, and 4 or 5, maybe 6, we played a game called Don't Step in the Poop. And what we would do was we had a dog that would just go shit in the lawn wherever. And the kids would be like four feet away standing, and they loved this game. Hmm. A fresh steamer would be out in the, out, out in the, uh, in the front yard, and they would line up, and then I would kind of go behind them, and I wouldn't be a hard shove, but just enough to kind of like get them going towards it. And they would kind of like run and like like try to catch themselves without <laughs> stepping in the poop. They loved it. They would laugh so hard. If they stepped in the poop, they lost. You know what you got to do? You got to take that image of Indiana Jones' Last Crusade where he's like stepping on the letters <laughs> and then just Photoshop it to where they're like, it's like shit rather than letters. So you don't have a dog anymore, right? <laughs> no, no. Well, if you want to keep the game going, let me know and I'll come over and lay a fresh steam. Okay, yeah, please. Yeah, don't step yeah. in hey, Bobby's poop. That movie, that, that movie reference was for Rihanna. <laughs> yeah, by the way, how crazy was that? Well, she was talking about the context of every time I shot out a movie. She's yeah. like, he actually says it in a relevant form. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> she she loves listening to yours. I love when the other hosts listen to, listen to other people's uh, other hosts' podcasts. I mean, to me, that's teamwork. That's that's a team. So uh, your guys' homework is to uh, I listen to Mike's and Tyson's. That's good. Just listen. Just I listen prefer to, to have us all meet up and just kind of do like a little quarter, like a monthly thing where we just all meet up and grab some drinks and just kind of bounce ideas off of each other in person so here's what i'm wanting to do i i, I had a brain shot i like that idea mark i was thinking we could play cow pie bingo dude what if we what if we said once a quarter something like that of the year we would have cow pie bingo i get it i like that what if we played uh or not played what if we just took over the my room mike on the mic dj'd it we would just if you guys want it, it's a full buddy cast night, Maui room, blah, 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 this Friday, April, whatever. And everyone shows up. If you want to come out, support full buddy cast, whatever, and just come out and let's, and let's, let's just have a good time. Um, I would love It'd be that. Pretty fun, Do you want me to bring the wheelchair? I could pump up the, the wheels. I know they got flat tires right now. <laughs> For what reason? Dude, I, I used to do like pup crawls with my wheelchair. I, I used to... When I lived over in Battersby. Dude, a full buddy cast pub crawl sounds good, actually. That'd be too. pretty fun, yeah. Freaking, uh, what do a He's like an old nom vet. You just have a blanket in your lap, just wheeling from place to place. <laughs> like, sir, what happened to you? Vietnam happened to me. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about, like, when I grew my beard out long, I wanted to just sit on the corner with a sign? It, like a like a like you, a, you need money, bro. Look like, like, like Tom Cruise. Look like the caddy from uh, you know Happy Gilmore with a Michelob Ultra sash. Oh, and yeah, shit. yeah. But I just wanted to have a sign that says I'm not homeless. I'm not a war vet. I just want to see if this shit really works. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I used to give people money on the side of the street all the time. Why don't you do it anymore? Because I don't really. Well, now that I moved to Enumclaw, I don't see him as much as I did when I That's lived true. up north. Built but by Corliss. There was a there was a night when <laughs> oh, we, yeah. Liz and I went and we watched a show down in Seattle when I lived over in Bremerton still, and we were walking to get back to the ferry, and we had to wait. So uh, there's a little bar on there's this bridge that goes from like Third Street to the ferry terminal. There's a little bar up there. So I sat up there and started drinking, and I drank a little too much. So the ferry's coming, or it's about 20 minutes out, and I leave, and there's a couple of homeless people that live in like the, the on the bridge, and some people on the way there. And I had a couple hundred bucks in my pocket. I started handing out money because it was close to Christmas. And Liz is like, "Why are you giving away all your money?" I'm like, "It's Christmas, and they're cold." And I was just drunk, <laughs> handing money out to anybody that came up to me. Caught the ferry, land on the other side, and a guy's trying to get a ride. Uh, like, cause you lived, you know, downtown Bremerton and he's asking for a ride, but I thought he was asking for money. So I just pulled out the wad of money. I'm trying to give him money. He's like, dude, dude, I don't want any money. Can you give me a ride though? You ever hear what Andrew S. Clay says to him? What? When they ask him for change, he says, can you break a <laughs> hundred? <laughs> what that guy asked you for money, you should have asked him to sing some uh, chili peppers for you when he's underneath the bridge. Mark, <laughs> say these things into the microphone. Oh, okay. I was saying that. <laughs> When the guy was asking for money, you should have uh, asked him to sing some Under the Bridge by Chili Peppers since he was already underneath there. Oh, Lord. Friggin' Mark. Mark in his karaoke. He's always got songs. So, Mark, uh, yeah, Rhiannon loves how you can just throw stuff out there. Um, shout out to, to, to Rhiannon. So, what we're going to – oh. That was the number right, one. Yeah, yeah. I already <laughs> I, had it there. I didn't even read this yet. I finally picked up Mark's uh, – Mark, Mark's list that we're going to go through. Number one thing that it says, word for word, shout out to Rhiannon. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. So did you want to say anything more? I mean, I know you mentioned it, but any shout out more to that? The goal is just to keep uh, bringing the crazy, man. Bring the crazy. Since we're talking about like, you know, homeless stories and stuff, I uh, was out in Indiana for a work trip this week and we went to Weber Grill first night when we got there. And it was like, you know, it wasn't super fancy, but it wasn't it wasn't cheap either. Mm-hmm. So I got like some beef brisket and stuff, and I'm I'm coming out of Weber Grill and this this guy asked me for money and I'm like, You could have my leftovers, man. And I'm like, it's definitely good stuff, you know? So I handed it to him. And then like the next day we're walking around and this guy is like, Hey man, you got any change? Different location. We just got done like I think we just destroyed White Castle. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> but um we're coming back. No, that was a different time. But we're coming back, and the guy asked me for some change. And I go, dude, I just, like, hooked up the guy. last guy I talked to, like, two guys ago, you know, that talked to me. And uh, he's like, well, what do he look like? I'm like, dude, I don't remember. And he's like, oh, I've heard that before. And then my buddy goes, dude, he gave you his leftovers last night. <laughs> it was that same guy? Yeah, yeah. And the guy's like, uh, and then his friend's like, yeah, dude, shut up. You sound like an idiot, man. <laughs> We had to ridicule the homeless. I love that. You got to hear a good story, though. Do you know Chris Trumbull? Yeah. So I, I heard a story about when he was, like, out drinking, like, in Seattle, like, years ago with, like, Jim. And it was, like, November. It was cold as hell out. And this guy has, like, no shoes on. Just barefoot, like, in November in Seattle. And so Chris tries to be nice, and he goes and buys this guy, like, a full-size pizza, like, a large, freshly cooked and everything at this restaurant. And he brings it out to the guy. He's like, here, man. The guy's like, I don't want that shit. And he goes, well, you could at least stand on the motherfucker to keep your feet warm, you <laughs> asshole. <laughs> so, because we're talking about St. Patrick's Day, drinking is always associated with it. When it do we know? Have you pulled it up on the calendar? Is it going to be like a Tuesday or is it going to be a Friday? I have no idea. Let me, let me Isn't pull. it always the 17th? <laughs> it's always the 17th. It's actually one of our friend's birthdays. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember Lizzie Muma, but I grew up with Lizzie. When is St. Patrick's Day? I'm looking it up right now. You don't have to pull it up. St. Patrick's Day will be on Tuesday. Tuesday. March 17th. March 17th. Oh, I'd be, I beat Siri. Um, <laughs> Siri, I don't use it. Apple. So, uh, But drinking is always involved. There was a thing going around that, hey, Super Bowl, the day Monday after Super Bowl should be a day off from work. Mm. Do you think the, the 18th should be a day off? After St. Patrick's Day. No, I don't like days off. You lose money. What, what if you get paid for it? A paid day off? Do you got, Of course. Give me any paid Dude, that day just off. reminded me of something. What? Okay, so I'm trying to remember the, I'm trying to remember the comic that said it. I, I remember it was it was a, a black comic, and he was selling shirts that say, I black out. And he was trying to sell them to white girls. After the comedy show, he <laughs> says, you wear this shirt, you're getting free drinks all night. Just I black out. <laughs> 
but he was talking about how everybody has a drinking holiday. He's like, white people got every day. White people <laughs> got every day. <laughs> he said, Irish people got St. Patty's Day. You know, Mexican, Mexican people, people Cinco have de Cinco de Mayo. And he goes, but there's no there's no drinking holiday for black people, right? Uh, so he says, I propose we do Happy Rosa Parks Day. He says, you set up all the bar stools in the bar like a school bus. And you play musical chairs, and whoever's sitting in the front gets a free shot when the music stops. I feel like that is borderline racist. <laughs> <laughs> but but it was it was it was a black comic that said the joke. Oh, so but now let me ask you this: Is it okay for white comics or white people to tell black comic jokes? Yes. <laughs> yeah, what, I feel if, like there was an office episode where Michael Scott did this with the Chris Rock say, joke. Yeah. If they're on HR got called. <laughs> if they're on they're, stage. they're trying to explain the joke, and he's like, no, no, you're messing it up. <laughs> and in front of HR, he says the joke again. Yeah. Yeah. But it's still funny. It's still it's still funny. There's this there, – I, I, yeah. Funny is funny. I mean, the fact that he did the school bus analogy, and when the music stops, you get a free shot. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> so messed up. So drug people, <laughs> stories, Wolfman. Tell us about Wolfman. Okay, so – I'm not gonna say the name, but I'm sure everybody's met Wolfman. That's just what it, that's what Robbie calls him. You know, that used to DJ at okay. Sears and the Crystal. Always called him Wolfman. Dude, Robbie was he the dude? How old is Robbie? He's probably like fifty or something. But he was like he. This was like ten years ago when he used to do all this, right? I when, mean, he did it less than ten years ago, but he used to DJ at Crystal all the time. He DJed at Cedars way back. In the he day, looked like, like a. He looked like. Uh, the way he would dress and the way like David Lee Roth, yeah. Like, did he even put like some like eyeliner <laughs> on? Eyeliner, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I know he'd come into safe. Oh, I know who that is. Yeah, yeah. He looked like a rock star. Yeah, yeah. In it's Enum like Chris Claw. Angel as an Enum Claw person. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like Chris. the Enum Claw Chris Angel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but anyway, Robbie would okay. Wolfman gave him call. no, no. So like we we just we had so many stories with Wolfman that that's just what we called him because he would always just like have this. Ah. Like his face would contort, and he'd be like, "You want to get punched in the face?" Like, like, like he would get super drunk and just like turn into another person, like Jekyll and Hyde. But this one time, <laughs> we were hanging out like at Nick O'Grady's place when he lived in like some duplex in uh-huh. Buckley, and it was like the first time I met this guy in person. I'd always seen him at bars, but it was like the first time I actually had a like introduction with him. Dude, he got so wasted. I think he pissed in the cat litter box that night. But when you walk into their duplex. Um, right off, there's like a short hallway where you hang your jackets, you know, a little closet for all that stuff. And then you go up the stairs to the right and at the top of the stairs was like his daughter's room. And then you go to the left at the top of the stairs and it's like in his rooms at the end. Well, I'm like sleeping on the couch downstairs and you can like look up and see the balcony. And I just like laying on my side and I just like open my eyes and I see him standing at the door, just staring at it. Like, like he's Carl from Sling Blade. You know, with just holding that, <laughs> holding that mm-hmm. sling blade, like, and they're Give like, me more of them can can, potatoes. Can, he's like, can you fix me some biscuits and mustard? <laughs> and he's just sitting there, and I'm just like, dude, like, it's already weird, but the question I'm asking myself is, how long has he been there? <laughs> Are we talking like five minutes, three hours? <laughs> but we were also like at this event. Where there was like some country concert music music festival, like at like Tracy Castle or something, and he got all trashed, and he started like blaming his friends for all this stuff, and and my buddy Kyle that I work with, he he starts saying something, and then he could tell that he like made a comment, you know, about yeah. what he was just responding right. to, and he's like, ah, you, he's like, you gotta leave, man. Like, he starts getting offended yeah. and starts confronting him. Right. And then he just looks at him and goes, why? Because words came out of my mouth. Right. And I just fucking lost it, man. If you guys, I don't know, have we have we shared this before? This story? Yeah. I'm sure I've shared it, but just not on the podcast. I, okay. All right. Then I know who this is about. <laughs> <laughs> I figure out who Wolfman is because I've heard this story before. I think if, if we've talked about it in the past, you've figured out who Wolfman is. <laughs> just go back and listen. Um so drunk drunk people stories. Uh, have you had anyone show up on the on the on the lot or to ta- to uh, jujitsu? I almost said taekwondo. Sorry about that, Barry. <laughs> oh, we we've, we've done jujitsu drunk before. Have you? How did that go? Oh, that's fun. 
Is it just like, like, the, every, like, like marijuana and jujitsu have a big overlap. There's a lot of people who partake in marijuana and do jujitsu. Alcohol, yeah, like we'll be at barbecues with a bunch of jujitsu people and we'll have a couple drinks and start wrestling. Okay, on or that's the like thing that. I hate. Let me just say that right now. Aggressive drunks well, are the difference. worst. Because there's like I want to learn jujitsu just because I cannot stand aggressive. There drunks. are aggressive people in jujitsu, but I would say they're by far the minority. The best people at jujitsu are kind of skinny nerds who like to take notes. They're the ones who dominate in jujitsu. Okay, but are you one of those people that take notes? No, not at all. But I, I'm not. That's probably one of the reasons why I'm not at like an elite level of jujitsu. So we're at a barbecue. Mm-hmm. We're drinking. Mm-hmm. When does the aggressive kick in? Like the key, the the objective is no aggressive. It gets that's aggressive though. Be having not being aggressive is aggressive. Here's the thing, guys. I'm gonna say this right now. Little insight, little BTS behind the scenes with Bobby. Been to the crystal, or not the crystal? Why do I keep seeing the crystal? Been to Cedars with him before. When he's turnt, we're turnt. I'm turnt. Drinking. Oh right? yeah, yeah. You can see the look in Bobby's eyes. <laughs> Where he's contemplating how he wants to just hurt the person in front of him, but he's not going to do it. So he's doing that. Like, <laughs> so he's so he's doing that like Sherlock Holmes thing, where he's like planning out his attack. Oh, but it's yes. like in a total. It's in a total DJJ form, like drunk jujitsu. Yeah, instead of Brazilian jujitsu, it's drunk jujitsu. You should make that shirt, dude. DJ DJJ <laughs> drunk jujitsu. <laughs> Dude, is that called? Is there something called DJJ? I bet if you Google it, you'll find it. Dude, but, let's but make we can a do it shirt. better. We can do let's it better. Let's do a full body cast shirt. That'd be pretty awesome. DJJ full body cast logo on the sleeve, drunk and then DJJ. Jiu-jitsu. <laughs> I'm going to start coming with shirts here soon. But that's the thing. I've seen Bobby look at me because people give Bobby a hard time because he can take it. He's one of those like jolly giants. He's like he's happy. He's fun. Um, you can kind of ri- ri- rip Saint him Patty's a little bit. Day costume. He can be the drunk green giant. And he and he will and he will look at you. And 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 so there's been times where I'm like, oh, yeah, right. Like w- maybe we're with Mike or whoever, right, Bobby? Give Bobby a little needle, like a little uh, stab with the, some words, you know. Cattle prod him. And Bobby will look with those drunk, like a little bit of drunk eyes. Go, and you can see he's 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 murdering me right now in his head, <laughs> in his head, and, and yet he's but he won't act on it, and he just sits there. That's the that's the reserve stuff we were talking about in the last episode. I try to be reserved, yeah. Where you just kind of sit, the the old man, where rather than trying to show off, you're just like. And I'm not I'm, claiming I don't show off. I mean, I, there's times where I have a little <laughs> bit too much to drink, and I certainly have been aggressive before. But I try uh, to make that. I try to move away from that as I get older. Right. Like. What would get me to fight even five years ago? It would take a whole lot more than that nowadays. Have you been in a bar fight before, Mark? I haven't even been in a fight, period, in, unless you count like fourth grade. In your life? Mm-hmm. What happened in fourth grade? That was probably the last time I've been in something close to a fight. What was the fight? Do you remember? Something stupid. I don't remember. You're out, you're out in Seattle at that time, right? Yeah, it was Seattle. Yeah. It was something stupid. I don't even remember. But like that was probably the closest I've been to a fight. Like I've had lots of scenarios where I could have been in a fight. But I've just talked my way out of it. Have people get gotten in your face? Thing. I've had plenty of people get in my face. It's just I don't let my um I don't You're let a my, lover, not a fighter. I don't let my pride get me to a point where I make decisions that I'm gonna regret. Do Smart. You, let me ask you this. I feel like because UFC, you guys love UFC, you guys both watch it, you guys enjoy it. It's, I kind I kinda remember last night's card. <laughs> well, last uh, this one I kind of want to talk about it in March because I'm gonna say, oh, remember that John Jones fight? It's like people are like, yeah, that was a month ago. But uh, but I feel like you have two like polar opposites. Maybe you have that in football too. But you have the, some people that are like they are like you, Mark. They like fight. They're they're fight fans, but they don't fight. And then there's fight but they fans that love to that fight. just want to just punch yeah. somebody right in the face. Mm-hmm. I can I can equate that down to two different groups of people who are fight fans. Let's talk about it. So, and I'm generalizing. There's obviously I always I hate having to preface that, but I'm I'm obviously generalizing because it's hard to have a conversation. Dude, that's too big don't. of a vocabulary word. You better drink another beer yeah. and get on our level, dude. <laughs> so, so there's people. There's we call it the just bleed crowd. There's people on the outside. They're the ones that boo when it hits the ground and it starts being a, a, a grappling, grappling match, and they just they just want to see big knockouts and big kicks and stuff. So those are those are your basic fans, and I would be willing to bet the vast majority of those people have never done any style of like actual training. 
where you know the they learn, don't see the, they don't see learn the technique jiu-jitsu. of it exactly, and then you have the people who train who happen to be UFC fran- UFC fans, or people who are specialized in one specific area. You have like your 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 different areas of martial arts. And those folks are the tacticians. They like seeing the strategy behind it. You're going to be much more okay with the decision if it was a, a good strategical fight. That's like, you know, Trent and uh, Trent Smith and um, Ryan Smith? Yeah. I watch baseball with them. Yeah. They're a completely different type of fan. They they they, they understand like, the mechanics. That's, they understand that's, a, that's the, the difference strategy. between between your just bleed right. fight fans and your folks that aren't. So when and this is kind of going back a little bit. Sorry for the for the for the wavy waves of like time travel to the back of, back in the day. But this is going to go back like maybe for when people are listening to this a month and a half ago when Conor McGregor and uh, Cowboy fought mm-hmm. and Stephen A. Smith and you had. <laughs> Joe Rogan, that were both kind of doing the after fight commentary, mm-hmm. and I think Stephen A. Smith said something to the gist of like, "We didn't really get to see anything from from he, he Cowboy, so we don't even was, know how that fight was really. Gonna it was go. just worded wrong, but he no, had he, he had good intentions, but it was worded wrong. I don't think he had good intention. He said that he basically said that Cowboy gave up; he didn't come to fight, and I have a huge problem with that. What I mean is like when he tried to clear it up later, when he when he like he was he, trying to walk his words back, but he couldn't because he never even addressed what he said that was incorrect. Yeah, so what do you think? Well, um, no, I agree with what he was saying, but I think that when he when he took the criticism from everybody else, he stood his ground, but he at least acknowledged like, hey, we're still cool no matter what your what your opinion of what I said or did is. Like I'm not gonna dislike you and say, Oh, because you you had something to say that disagreed with me. I'm not going to have a beef with you. It's kind of didn't more like. Didn't he say if he landed the punch, he could knock Joe Rogan out? I didn't hear that. I'm part. pretty sure he said that. That's laughable, though. Yes. If he, he, if, oh, if if Steve A. Smith. I, I, I saw somewhere, punch. don't quote me on this. I we I don't have a Jamie here. Like, look it up, Jamie. But um, <laughs> I swear he said something to the extent of if don't, 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 make no mistakes about it. If I land the punch, Joe Rogan's going out. Which isn't saying anything, but also saying a lot. <laughs> I doubt. I, I'm not saying I well, doubt anybody, that he said Anybody it, can land a punch and knock somebody out. That, that's a big if on his part. Do you sure. see the, the the video of him hitting mitts? Hit, hit, yeah. That's what, what they're making what was, fun of. Yeah. yeah. You can, he's the Just Bleed crowd. You can obviously tell the man has never trained a day in, com- in combat arts right. in his entire life. And well, Joe Rogan, who has, whose opinion is going to hold more weight? Uh, he might know some jump, drunk jujitsu, though. <laughs> some DJJ. Drunk jiu-jitsu. Drunk I should jiu-jitsu? teach a class I think at my house <laughs> where every Friday night drunk you jitsu. show up for drunk jitsu. <laughs> and we just get shit housed. Every time you tap out, you, you got to take a shot. Drunk shit, drunk so you, shit, so, so, shit show. Drunk shit show. So, <laughs> if, 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 so if, you're, if you're not in a full-on triangle choke, but you pass out, do you earn your uh, brown belt? God, no. <laughs> You know, for you browning know, out. <laughs> I'm not even a brown belt. Brown belt's hard, man. Yeah, it, it, brown belt's you know eight ten years. Have you have you done any? Uh, I training? tried jujitsu at Jeff Hoagland School for like two months. Jeff runs an awesome school. No, he's killer. Um, I wanted to train there when I moved here, but it does not fit in my schedule. What happened, Mark? I mean, for me, it was just more like I want to do it for fun, and I never had the intention on doing any fighting. And I think that a lot of people that do the class kind of more had the intentions of wanting to get it to compete is, is jeff hogan in auburn who's the one in, he's, he's in right town. by napa he's in town. okay okay oh he, he, okay. he reminds me of jen's pulver kind jeff of is that. in the ufc yeah yeah he had oh, he three real? fights in the ufc right chase is in the ufc it's funny it was when jeff first got signed to the ufc he was signed up to fight hen and burrow mm-hmm. when hen and burrow was a like when uh, he was on his like big yeah. streak like jose aldo yeah, yeah, yeah. but no Je- jeff's a great guy and uh you know, he runs a great school, and I really wanted to train there, but um, it just did not fit in my schedule. By the time I get off work and get there, you'd be a third of the way through class, so it just I, I couldn't justify the uh, taking the classes there. So now I get up at four thirty in the morning and go train in Burien. <laughs> no, his, his guys, he's doing something right. His guys are good. Um, yeah, he's got some good people there. Um, I got to give a shout out to Kindred though. Kindred Jiu Jitsu is, is, in my opinion, the best school in the state. What uh, do you guys ever? Go to the what do they call those? Um, you've you've done it before. Um, where I, I know I went with Ty Sotomayor back in the day. What are those called? Um, where you kind of have a a match, but it's not really a match. It's scrimmage. like scrimmage. It's kind of like, like a that. tournament. 
No, no, it's like a spar session. Yeah, it's like a spar session, but people show up. They pay mm-hmm. tickets. They buy tickets. It's like a heater or something. It's like some sort of smoker. Re- smoker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. For grappling. Have you been in a smoker before? Yeah, but I mean, they're just. Be, it's just a tournament, or what? So like, so how they would be work up north? So there'd be a hundred and seventy five pound tournament, and then in between brackets and stuff, they'd have matches, which is just like an exhibition match. I mean, I don't know the differentiate exhibition i mean you're really just going in there trying to tap another person out sure you can call it what you want but you're going like you're trying it's, right you're not holding back uh, preferably um but that's how they did them up north yeah i was in one um when you guys had a friend's giving i was competing in one so that was a smoker that you were because it's, it's a match it, but you had like <laughs> equivalent your, your you know, picture like was taken like you were yeah, like I had a poster with me on it right and so yeah. like when i went to this other one it wasn't like not a, there wasn't a so picture. you could have them in gym. We have in-house tournaments where, where things like that happen. So uh, we had one up at Kindred, and Kindred is the school that I uh, I used to uh, I was part owner of with a bunch of business partners up in Edmonds. Um, so we had an in-house, I guess smoker you could call it, but it was an in-house white belt tournament. We had all of our white belts get together, and whoever won had the opportunity to go compete in uh, I think it was Oregon or California. So, and then you had special matches in between those brackets as well. But that was just small. You know, it was a gym. There was maybe 15, 20 people on the sides, but you're running a full-on tournament. Yeah, Mark. Mark. Co- <laughs> competing is, is daunting to some people. And it is still, to me, even after all these years of martial arts and grappling and MMA and stuff, it's still daunting to me. But you learn so much about yourself through a competition. What do you learn? It sounds so like macho, but kind of what you're made of. Like I was in, I, 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 my nerves were so bad in my last competition that when I watch it, it's not even me or my style. Like I'm so much better, but nothing, taking nothing against my, my opponent because he was obviously better at competition than me because mm-hmm. I couldn't pull the trigger and get into my groove and do the things I can do in the training room. So you have people who are really, really good in the training room. And then they get into the tournament and they can't perform. And I'm not saying I'm, I'm really good in the training room, but I just couldn't live up to, to the level that I know I'm capable of when I was in the ring. And that you just learn that about yourself. You learn that, you know, when, when times to go, when it's time to go, sometimes you can't pull the trigger. Dude, I know exactly how you feel like when I'm at home and I have to piss, just go to the bathroom and get it done. But when I'm at like a, <laughs> a I'm at a Seahawks game and I have to walk out to that trough, it's just like <laughs> I can't always get it done. How much, how much money would someone have to pay you to slide down the trough? At a Seahawks oh. game. What's the dollar well, Wait, amount? wait. While people are standing there peeing? No, no, like, no. Everyone, like a, everyone like takes a step. They like may have just peed. Like one they, of those nice slip and slides <laughs> where you're like, oh, wow, it shoots water over you too. No, me and Tyson do these hypotheticals sometimes at work. It's okay. hilarious. Okay, so so what would be your... Well, you, I, I I think that guy from the gorge that did the slip and slide, I think he would do it. <laughs> How much would it cost you to slide down the trough? Everyone takes a step back and lets you go. They may have just finished peeing. 50 but, bucks. I wouldn't do it. it 50 it, bucks? Dude, 50 You're bucks. You're in Seattle with piss-covered clothes. 50 bucks. Really? Yeah. Are you being serious? I mean, I've had a few beers, yeah. so maybe like sober me would be like 150 bucks. Really? But it's just piss. Dude, I went to like a... Like, is it drain? Like, it's just going to be... It's like, just a trough of like safe... Or, is it going to be full of piss? It's how it is during a Seahawks game. Flesh then, and meadows, dude. Then it's not going to be that much. I'm going to slide right through Are you, that. What's your, what's your amount? I mean, for me, if I was to do it, it'd be kind of more like... Sam McKinnison talking about the time he pissed in his suitcase. <laughs> he's like, hey, man, like, he's like, you ever get drunk? And How just... are those the same thing, Mark? <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Okay. So I'll get there. I'll go full circle. Okay. Okay. Mark's ready. Suitcase drop Mark, done. Mark's like, stop laughing. Let me get there. Seriously. Okay. So he, he's like, he's like, you ever get high and just piss in your luggage? He's like, yeah, like, I got like super high. And he's like. And I just opened up my, my suitcase and just pissed all over my clothes. <laughs> and the next day, I'm like, whoa, what the fuck, man? He's like, who pissed all over my clothes? And his buddy's like, hey, man, you, you did, man. You remember? And he's like, no, I don't remember. Because if I did remember, I wouldn't have done it in the first place. <laughs> That's how you'd get me to yeah, yeah, so There's no drop. dollar amount. I could be like, a thousand I would have bucks. to be a thousand a, bucks perfectly sober. You're not doing it. No, no, I'd have to be. My, my price went up, 150. I'd have to be in a, in a state of mind where I'm like, Mine's sure. Yeah. Like, sounds like a great idea. You yeah. sold it well. <laughs> yeah. Five hundred bucks. Five hundred bucks for you. Yep. I like these hypotheticals. Okay. So here, so here's one. So you're at a concert. Garbage can it has the garbage bag inside of it. Everyone's been throwing their drinks in there. Yeah. Pull the garbage back out. Cut a hole at the bottom. How much for you to drink? What's in there? Uh, Ten grand. Same thing. I'd say probably twenty five hundred bucks for me. 
Wow. Yeah. You got a gut of steel what over here. What about 2475? I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to let I'm not going to down a little bit. I'm not going to let 25 bucks come between me. You can go buy a car and... with him and just like go back and forth with him. Um, all right. So, I'm about to lose a pinky. Cut a pinky off. Pinky. Well, we t- I think we've talked about this. I'd go cut a pinky off. I don't need to play video games with it. I don't drive with it. I'd go 150 grand. I'd go 20 grand. Can't do it. I, I, I was just getting greedy with it. I'd go 20 grand. We go low. I might even, if someone laid out $10,000 in cash, they're going to give me like numbing stuff and I'm going to have it like taken care of medically. I'd be tempted. 10 grand is a lot of money. Would you? Can't do it. A pinky. I like my green tea. <laughs> 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 that would, you're trying to get your point across. Like show show everybody how but you can't when you're sipping on them. You're like, oh yeah, but you don't have anything. And they're like, ten grand for nothing. a pinky? What do you? I can't. Remember. Sometimes it even gets in the way. My Dude, pinky. for me, of it's, what I don't know. What I'm, you know? If I was an auto mechanic, I'd probably cut it off for five grand because <laughs> because you get your. It's so hard to get your hand into some of these tiny engines. hands oh, automotive. My gosh, Are you and Trump, tiny you, hands you, automotive. You, he was like Chris to, Elliott from Scary Movie I probably two. cut it's off my two fingers. <laughs> yeah. It's my weekend. I, um, all right. Well, we are about five minutes left. Uh, flak jackets, safety drinks. What does that mean, Mark? Okay. Well, kind of it kind of piggybacks on those next subjects. But my buddy Tim. Wait, wait. Is this going to come off of? We got we got another subjects coming up. Well, How long? That one kind of complements some other ones around it. Can we can we hold off on that then? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll wait for the next one. Uh, we talked about homeless today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that going to be part of that? That uh, I kind of got jacket? the ones I intended, but there's always plenty of those stories. But I got the ones I intended on that list. How about gear shifting? Is that going to be? Oh, did you ever see that meme I made with Richard yes? Gear? Loved that meme. It was pretty funny. I saw it. So um, I'm out at Lake Cushman. My brother sets up his projection screen in the yard, right? And we're watching Sir Lancelot played by Richard <laughs> Gear, and he's just first m- night. He's maxing on Guinevere when he's going through the obstacle course. And I'm just like, whoa. I was like, somebody's about to shift into third gear. She better watch it. <laughs> and then from there, I just thought of that like gear shifter meme where I, I found a picture of him like in all these scenes where it's kind of like, okay, intensity level one, intensity level two, intensity level three. And I got the pictures of each stage. And I'm like, first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear. <laughs> And it's then, so good. And then the last one I have him, like, where he's, like, over by this guy's crotch, and he has this hesitant look, and it just says reverse gear on it. <laughs> it's so stupid. What's the best Richard Gere movie? Best Richard Gere movie? Pretty Woman. Dude, I mean. What? Pretty Woman. It's if, the bottom of the barrel. Jackal. Jackal? No, no. Um, If I had to say, like, a scene, I would say Brooklyn's Finest. Really? See, because I go Officer and Gentleman. Why, 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 we'll do yours oh, no, next, fine, but yeah. why is yours uh, Brooklyn's, Brooklyn's finest? finest? Because there was a scene that blew my mind. What was it? Where he's fighting this guy in like a, Good just movie. like an office supply closet or something. And this guy's like going to kill him. And he like reaches for this big ass zip tie and puts around this guy's neck and just cranks it. And I was like, dude, that is dangerous if somebody sees this movie because they're going to get an idea and just run with it, man. <laughs> You'll just see some guy running down alleys and just boom, 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 like hits like three people and they just fall and they're like, like, like trying to get the zip tie off their neck. I'm like, if the wrong person saw that movie, it would just spark a really bad idea for them. Everyone don't watch that movie. <laughs> it's like, you remember the movie Money Train? Yeah, J-Lo was nude scene in that. <laughs> no, that's how I remember it. That oh, yeah. U-turn. She has a nude scene in U-turn, Dude, too. you know what's crazy about was that? Sean, was that? No, that was Joaquin Phoenix in no, U-turn. No. Dynamite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of pinky, Mark. Sean Penn had it. Oh, speaking of pinky, Sean Penn had it. Take those, yeah. you know, clippers to his fingers. Is it? Am I on the mic now? There you go. Okay, so you. you know, he brought up J Lo being in Money Train. She had a scene with Wesley Snipes, mm-hmm. who was also in Brooklyn's Finest, and that was before <laughs> before he forgot to pay his taxes. <laughs> Look when he did that. What's movie. he done since then? The Expendables. Dude, Wesley Snipes was in the uh, was in Mr. Peanut's Death. Did you guys see the? You see Mr. Peanut? Uh, from the why do you say peanut like that? Peanut, peanut. You see, Mister Peanut. That's how you were saying it. What did I say before? Peanut. What do I sound now? Peanut. Peanut. Emphasis on the uh. Peanut. Tomato, tomato. Anyways, Mister Peanut. Mister Peanut. <laughs> the uh, 
for the peanuts planters peanuts yeah god damn it <laughs> stop saying like that he, he he uh was in like the the motorhome or whatever when it went off the cliff and he's hold he's hanging on and so if, you guys got to watch this if you guys haven't seen it already but um mr peanut dies and Wesley Snipes is in the is in the commercial, mm-hmm. but then at the Super Bowl, they there's a new like there like a like a single uh, drop of water landed on the grave site where that he was buried, and a new one sprouted out. Oh lord! And so they, so. Say I'm gonna go down the road and get some peanuts. <clears throat> I'm gonna go down the road and get some peanuts. <laughs> See, you have to put an emphasis on you to make sure people know what you're saying. That's so funny. I've always said pe. I, I've said it. So I wonder if I peanut butter. I wonder if I go to the the doctor and they're like, "Hey, mm-hmm. what hurts?" And I'm like, "My penis." <laughs> <laughs> like, go, why would your penis hurt anyway? <laughs> well, the reasons. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I used to have a hat that I like. It was my you, favorite hat, and it just let me see your palms. There's no hair on them. You're okay. <laughs> that was the see. That's the thing. I never got that joke. Harry Palm and her five sisters, and I'm like, if people are masturbating, you don't have hair on the end of your. <laughs> Ween. I thought that the, the outcome of masturbating is like a miracle grow for for hair. It may have, on your no, palms. no. If you eat bananas, you grow hair in your butt. That's what we're talking about. What? <laughs> what? Is that something? Is that the peanut butter solution? <laughs> no, no. But I've seen that movie. A hash short round from um, Indiana Jones. Is that what he says? No, no. The, the Asian kid yeah. in the movie Peanut Butter Solution is the one who plays oh, the same Data, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, from uh, Goonies, and yeah. he's um, and also short round in Temple of Doom. We've derailed. Out. We've derailed. No, we didn't. Yeah. We're exactly where we need to be. Yeah, especially with Mark here. <laughs> we know where we're at. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening so much. Uh, we're going to do a, uh, another one of these conglomerates. Sign out. And uh, do the sign out. Yeah, man. so, well, he hasn't seen the sign out, so so he probably hasn't listened to it. So why don't you do the sign out, and then we'll have Bobby do the sign out as well on the next one. So do the sign out. Oreo. Unlock the magic. We got to go rock on this and rock on that. You, that's your part. Okay, fine. I'll do Collaboration, that. Collaboration, dude. All right, here we go. Uh, all right. Uh, San Jose. No, actually, we got listeners in like... I'm so confused. I know you are. <laughs> you actually have listen- <laughs> so, so here we go. Uh, rock. I'll do the listeners that we have in these different areas. Yeah, yeah. Um, rock on Australia. Uh, rock over Zimbabwe. Oreo. Unlock the magic. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everyone. Bobby's so confused.